Hi, I'm Roger, and in this video we're going to keep it simple. Something very simple. It's a way to build three birdhouses, uh, three different types. Uh, this one right here, for example, is for bluebirds. This one here would be for barn swallows or robins, because they like a platform and not an enclosed area. And these here would be for the common wren. And they're all made out of a, each one is made out of a uh, cedar fence picket. These are six feet long, they're five-eighths of an inch thick, and they're, they say they're six inches wide, but they're actually five and a half. One end, as you can see here, is what they call a dog ear. It's got a couple angles on it. And uh, in one of these boxes, they actually make use of that. Uh, I'm going to make this simple. This is, uh, if you're an advanced woodworker, this is going to be a waste of your time. But if you're a beginning woodworker, or you're looking for something for the kids to do, uh, this is it. Uh, you don't need any real fancy tools for it. Obviously I'm sitting at my table saw here. It's got a builder and router table. You don't have to have that. If you have a happen to have a miter saw, like the, this one here, then uh, that's an advantage, but you don't have to have that either. You can use, uh, you can use a circular saw. Now if you don't have one of those, Maybe I just have a jigsaw. You can use a jigsaw. And if you don't have that either, or if you want to let the kids use something that's not a power tool, there's always the old reliable hand saw. This is a little Stanley job saw. Uh, when, back when I was working in construction as an electrician, I carried one of these for years and years. It was handy for just cutting little blocks and whatever. And uh, it's actually held up pretty good over the years. The only real power tool you will need is a drill. It doesn't have to be cordless. This one happens to be a DeWalt 20 volt cordless. It doesn't have to be. But you, you need to drill some holes unless you really want to go old school and use the brace and bit. Now I don't have a brace here, but the brace is the original cordless drill. Now if you've never seen one, uh, Google it. You can see what a brace is. And they have uh, bits that chucked into them. Remember back when I started out in the electrical trade, we did that quite a bit up in attics back in the 70s. But uh, anyway, that's not what we're here to talk about. Uh, the other things you'll need is obviously you'll need a hammer, um, tape measure, or at least a 12 inch ruler. If you have a square, this is uh, what they call a speed square, and this one's actually uh, $1.99 from Harbor Freight. You don't have to spend big money to get one of these. We're not building a space shuttle here, we're building birdhouses. So these are uh, pretty accurate. The other thing you'll need is uh, you'll need to drill an opening. For example, this here in the uh, bird, bluebird birdhouse, that's an inch and a half opening. Uh, you can either use a spade bit like this, just be careful you don't uh, punch through and tear out the other side. Or uh, use what I use, which uh, this is called a Forster bit. This one is an inch and an eighth. This uh, is the size for the wren house. Uh, this drills a nice smooth hole, but you want to make sure your drill will take at least, a, this has a 3 inch uh, shank on it, so you want to make sure that your drill will take at least a 3 inch shank. For fasteners, if you have uh, a pneumatic or electric brad nailer, that's, that's great. That makes things real easy. If you don't uh, want the kids messing with something like that, You'll need some uh, four penny galvanized finishing nails. I don't know if you can see that there. Uh, inexpensive at any of the big box stores. Then you'll need a few one inch rust resistant screws. This happens to be stainless steel. Uh, you can also use a coated deck screw. And this is for the uh, bottom of the nest boxes on these ones that are closed. What this is, is uh, there's a screw on each side towards the back the one in the center. When you take out this one in the center, the floor right here will tilt down to allow you to clean out the birdhouse at the end of the year and get it ready for the next year's residence. Uh, a few assorted drill bits are handy. Uh, you'll need a, a drill bit to make this mounting hole up here. That's a quarter inch hole. Uh, this happens to be some wood brad bits. Uh, they sell these at Menards. You can get the set from 8 to 3 8 for about 8 bucks. Uh, they're not made for drilling steel, but they have a brad point on them, and uh, they will uh, not walk around on the wood while you're trying to drill. 
The smallest one in here, eighth, is uh, would be good to use if you're going to drill pilot holes for your, where you're close to the edge for your nails so you don't split anything. And of course you'll need a pencil. You don't have to glue these. Um, I do just because it makes it tighter and makes things hold together better. I use Tight Bond 3. It's a uh, waterproof glue. It's meant for outdoors. So there again, that's an option. A couple other options I'll be pointing out as we get going here in the build. These fancy angles here, or this here, I did this on my bandsaw. You don't need to do that. That could be square, or you can use the dog ears, like this here is factory dog ears from the top of the picket. Another thing I did was, uh, this is a 10 degree angle on this particular house. So these are cut to 10 degrees. That's fairly simple to do even with a handsaw. And I'll give all the dimensions for this. And I also put a 10 degree bevel back here on this side to make the roof fit up straight. You don't have to do these angles. You don't have to do the bevel. This can also just be flat. So, you know, there's a, a few things on here that uh, you don't have to do that I've done. For example, right here on the uh, edges, I uh, ran that with a little round over bit on uh, a router table. And I didn't even use this one here built in. I used a little one back on the bench back there. I always keep a round over bit in. But on this video, unlike a lot of the other ones that I've kind of seen when I was doing a little bit of research, this isn't clickbait. This isn't going to direct you to some site to buy some plans or to join a club or get into a certain person's woodworking plan deal. Uh, I'm going to give all the dimensions here. Well, I'm going to keep this very simple. That way uh, if you've got children or grandchildren and you want to get them involved in a little bit of easy woodworking and give something back to nature too, uh, this will be the video for it. Uh, one other thing I want to point out, you'll notice that these birdhouses do not have perches. That is, uh, that's a bad thing. That allows predators easy access. The birds don't need it. Uh, this here has what they call a little bit of a double front on it. It's what they call a predator guard for the bluebird house. And it prevents woodpeckers from uh, easily making that hole bigger and gaining access. Uh, there are plans for woodpecker houses too. I may do one of them in the future. But this is designed for bluebirds, not woodpeckers. Uh, and as a rule, the sparrows don't usually bother these, although you can get a, the occasional sparrow in there and you may have to open it up and shoo them out. Uh, the platform boxes for the robins and uh, barn swallows, sparrows may nest in there, but they don't generally mess with a platform like that. On the wren house, this hole's too small for a sparrow to even get in, so you don't need to worry about sparrows in there. Uh, another thing I should mention when you uh, go to buy your fence pickets at your local big box store, if they're stored outdoors, and I picked some up the uh, day before yesterday, and they were outside and covered with snow, and I knew better than to do this, but I cut one of them up to build this wren house before I let it dry out and acclimate to the temperature in the shop here, and I knew I shouldn't have done that because what it did was when it dried then, it, I don't know if you can see the cracks on the side here, I'm going to have to take this apart and glue it back together. It uh, shrunk and spread and bowed and warped, so if you're going to buy some stuff that's been sitting outside in the weather, bring it in, let it dry for a few days in your shop. If you can let it go a week, that's even better. As a rule, cedar fence pickets are not kiln dried, so it depends how long it's been since uh, they were cut from the tree. And you may get uh, some shrinkage and warpage and cupping and so on. Another thing to look for when you're choosing your pickets is to, uh, of course, you're all going to have knots in them. You're not, it's going to be really hard to find any without any knots at all. But try to find something as clear as you can, as straight as you can. Uh, they're not expensive. I, these were $2.49 a piece. I just picked up five more today for another, for another project. A lot of things you can do with these. Okay, with all that said, we'll get on to the build. Okay, as I mentioned in the intro, this is going to be very basic. It'd be for the beginner woodworker or someone that wants to teach their children or grandchildren um, how to build a simple project. That's why I've chosen these birdhouses and a simple way to do it. Uh, as I mentioned in the intro, the wood was very wet. 
and I needed to let it dry out so I've left, left it stacked up in the shop here for a week let it acclimate to the shop and dry out and of course when I picked it up there was snow on it and, and today being uh, December 29th and it's 60 degrees outside it's well strange at any rate I've got the uh, layout done on the boards which I'll show you here in a moment at the end of the video will be a uh, screenshot of the plans with all the dimensions and I'll let them run for quite a bit so you can either copy it down or uh, freeze the video and do a screenshot uh, okay now to get to the layout I've done this for all three houses and we'll get to the cutting here later but uh, as I've laid these out I noticed that uh, a couple places I had some knots that I didn't want to put into the build like right here I'm cutting this knot out hence the X's and I have another one up here that I'm not going to use and this is one of the sides and when I cut the angle on the side the uh, this knot will be thrown away um, as I mentioned before you don't have to do the angled sides you don't have to do the angled roof it just adds a little bit of look to it and it, of course it will also help with uh, rain running off you'll also notice here on my layout and you also don't need to lay it out this way you could have this flipped and when you cut one cut the other one but I'm making this simple and basic so uh, I've laid each one of these out separately you'll notice that there's an extra line here that's to allow for the saw curve what you can't do and have a project come out correctly is just lay everything out and make a bunch of lines and then cut on the lines because your your parts won't all be the the same size and some will be a little bit short and one will be the right length and you'll end up with uh, things kind of cattywampus hence I've uh, drawn the saw curve in here and I'll, before we get into uh, cutting these and I'll probably cut these on my miter saw but I'll show you some uh, ways to do this either with a hand saw or with a jigsaw or with a circular saw and uh, still make straight cuts so let me get the camera rearranged here and I'll show you some of these little tricks okay I've got this board propped up here I've got my depth set so that I'm not cutting too deep uh, this is if you're going to be using a circular saw and of course this here is my mark and this is my waist side so I want to cut on that side of this line uh, I'm pretty good at cutting straight lines because I've been doing this for years but if you're kind of new to this you can use a, take a, a speed square like this I say it doesn't have to be a, a real fancy one because we're not building a space shuttle here line your blade up with your mark and place the square against the base of the saw you can hold the square with your left hand and you can push the saw through with your right hand and if you don't plug the saw in it doesn't work okay start this again I said put the square here you can also if you know your measurement from your blade to your base plate you can measure over and do the same thing I just hold it up against the side get my blade about where I want it and you'll get a perfectly straight cut you can do the same thing when you're doing these angles if you like this here is a 10 degree angle and on your speed square you'll, there's a pivot point and if you look down on this side you'll see degree marks uh, obviously this is going to be hard to see because this is silver on silver but it's like 5, 10, 15 so you can pivot it to where you get to the 10 degree mark You have to get your saw lined up. Ok, 
here if you're using a jigsaw, the same thing holds true. You can place, I don't have a jigsaw handy here, but you can uh, place your, jig, your speed square down and set it to the base plate of the jigsaw. Hold this tight, or you can even use a, a little spring clamp if you like. And then just uh, let the jigsaw base plate follow this speed square down and you'll end up with a perfectly straight cut. Okay, I'm going to uh, cut some of these pieces up and then uh, we'll be back. Okay, we're going to start out with the easiest of the three to build and that is this uh, little platform house for robins and swallows. A uh, couple little extras you can do. You, here again you don't have to. One, of course you didn't have to do this slope. It just aids a little bit in the water running off and it looks a little nicer. Uh, something that I will do and you can either do this, if you don't have a router you can also do it with uh, some coarse sandpaper. But I like to round the edges on the front here so that you don't have any splinters anywhere sticking out. What you don't want to do, you don't want to sand the whole house. You want to leave it rough so the birds have something to actually grab onto. Um, our house has vinyl siding on it and I don't know how the birds do it, but I've seen it come up and actually clamp onto the side of the house and pick around and look for bugs or whatever, but anyway, you want you don't want a real smooth surface. You want to have some texture to it, a little roughness, and it's, it's supposed to look rustic. Another thing you can do that, here again, you don't have to do it, I added this little feature here of putting these little corners on the roof to make it look a little nicer, and I've also cut a 10 degree bevel on my roof piece right here. You don't have to do this, but it makes it fit a little better when it comes up against the back. And what, in order to make this little dog ear on the front, it's very simply take your, uh, this your back piece right here, lay that on the uh, roof por portion, get everything lined up square, and take a pencil and Make some marks like so. Cut those off. And I'm going to uh, go over and do that here. Be right back. Okay, it comes out just like that. Um, next thing I'm going to do, and here again it's optional, and I'll uh, move the camera over here so you can see how I do it, is I'm going to uh, put a little bit of a round over. This is the top of the roof. I'll round this over around here. And then on my uh, front piece, which is right here, I'll round over both sides of the top of it so that it won't tend to splinter and now the birds can still grab it just fine. And then on the sides, on the out ooh, sawdust, on the outside of each one of these, here in the front, I will round over this a little bit. What I have is, uh, of course, I have a nice little router table here, but I have a little portable one on my bench that I always keep an eighth inch round over bed in for all the little projects I do. It's real handy having something set up like that. Uh, here again, if you don't have a router or a router table and you would still like to round these edges over, you can take a piece of 80 grit sandpaper and form it around the edges and just sand it and you can do the same thing. It just take a little bit longer. But I'll show you how I do this on the little router table here. And this is not a big fancy one. This is about uh, 40 years old. And it originally came from Sears. And the router underneath it is a uh, 1970s era Black & Decker. So it's nothing fancy. So let me get the camera repositioned here. And I'll show you how I run these edges over. Okay, if you're not familiar with a router table or you've never seen one before, uh, router router's mounted up underneath it. You can say this is a real old one here, and I can't see the camera, so I hope everything's in focus here. Uh, this is bolted to the table, and you can elevate the bit up and down. Now uh, this little bearing on here is what your work runs against, and this is called a roundover bit. Uh, this particular one has an eighth inch radius. There's all kinds of different sizes available, but I will uh, show you how I do this, and this is one of those things if... Uh, you don't feel comfortable doing this, and by golly, don't do it. I've done this for a long time, so I know where and where not to put my hands.
that makes a, a nice rounded edge here on the front. It's not very, it's not real pronounced, but it's enough that it will keep this from splintering and it just adds a little extra feature to it. So we'll get back to the assembly table. Okay, the first part of the assembly will be to put the sides onto the back. And this, of course, is the back. These are your two sides with the, of course, with the bevels on if you chose to bevel them. Um, I'll show you how to do this with regular conventional finish nails, and then I'll be using a brad nailer. Uh, I glue mine. You don't have to glue it. I use uh, Tight Bond 3. It's in a, my little glue bot here, which is a great little invention for dispensing glue. Another little thing that's handy that you don't have to have it is a clamp. So you can uh, clamp and hold your side together while you uh, nail it. Okay, if you're going to be using finished nails, of course you want to make sure you don't drill any pilot holes above here. So you just make a little mark on the side about where your sides end. And just uh, lay your side down using a very small drill bit. Drill a little pilot hole so you don't split the wood as you're driving the finish nail in. This isn't usually necessary when you're using a brad nailer. Okay, and then on the long side, if you chose to bevel yours, that's where I put the glue. Just give it a nice little spread with your finger there to even it out. Some projects I put glue on both surfaces. I'm not doing that here. Okay, now you got the little challenge of being able to hold this and hold this and keep this other end from flopping around. Just take your side you haven't mounted yet and put it in there and use it for a little stand. Get your end flushed up here. Should be using galvanized nails and it helps put the point down and not the point up. There again, make sure that uh, everything is square and straight. Another little finishing touch would be to take a nail set. Set the head just a little bit below the surface. Lost my prop. Then we'll do the same thing with the other side, except I'm going to switch over to my brad nailer here. This is where a clamp comes in handy. <clears throat> I'm using inch and a quarter galvanized brads. Once you get a couple of them set, take the clamp off, make sure everything's good and square. Okay, the next piece we want to put in is the front. This little piece here. It goes right in here like so. The 
And if we get a little bevel on it like I did, make sure the bevel is up and not down. You want that to be even with the bottom and straight across. Our next piece is the floor and as you can see here I've cut little 45 degree corners off of the, the floor block here. That allows for drainage and uh, that way water won't build up in there and maybe it'll allow for a little bit of extra ventilation too. And this is going to need to have, that uh, fits, good and tight. On the other houses the uh, I make the floor so that it is re can swing down so you can clean the uh, house out at the end of the year. It's on a platform house, it's not necessary. You can just scoop the stuff out with your hand. Make sure everything's straight and flush. And nail it in. Okay, then next of course and last is the roof. If you've uh, cut the bevel on it like I have, make sure you have the bevel the right direction and don't put it on backwards. Well, you'll know right away when you line it up, go to put it on there and it doesn't line up. But you'll end up with something that looks like this. So we'll get some glue on this here. It's on the back panel. You might notice I'm not using a whole lot of glue here because I don't want a whole bunch of squeeze out because that would be something I'd have to clean up. On uh, furniture projects and stuff I go a little heavier than that because I have to do a lot of sanding anyway. We're not doing any sanding here. Okay, once you get everything lined up. Okay, when you're, I should point out too, when you're nailing across the back, I've got a pretty good eye for this because I've done it for years. Do a little measuring here and actually make a pencil line so you go across so you don't have the nails coming out above or below the roof. Okay, and just like that you got yourself a robin and swallow house. So, next one we'll probably do will be the bluebird house, so we'll be back to start on that one. Well, I should mention that this is... Uh, the, absolutely the easiest house to make. You don't need to drill any holes here or anything like that or worry about trying to make the tilt down bottom and drilling pilot holes and everything. So this is the easiest thing if you're introducing a child into a uh, little bit of woodworking. This is absolutely the easiest one to make and that's why I started with this one first. Okay, be back later with the uh, Bluebird build. I should say the Bluebird house build.
We're not building any birds. Okay, next up will be the bluebird house, like so here. And uh, here again, I'll be using my brad nailer when I assemble this, but you can certainly use uh, galvanized finishing nails. A four penny nail is just the right height or just the right length for this. And make sure you uh, countersink your, ant your nails after you've driven them in. Uh, there's a couple little uh, differences here. Of course, this one has a front. It's also designed so that when you take out this screw right here in the center, the bottom will hinge down. It's held by one screw on each side in the back. We'll get to that in the assembly right here. That way at the end of the year you can uh, pull this screw out and there's enough gap here you can get your finger in there and you can pull that down and empty it out. Put it back up, put the screw back in, it'll be ready for next year. This little portion on the front here uh, is called a predator guard. It helps keep uh, woodpeckers out. Uh, it's optional, you don't have to do that. But uh, it's an easy thing to add on and uh, you also don't have to do these little 45 degree corners on there, but I did to add a little bit to it. And also with the roof here, again, if you want to just do a straight flat roof without the bevels here, you can. This is a 10 degree angle. It's completely optional. It just makes it look a little better. And you also don't have to route these edges here like I did to smooth them. You can just uh, leave them rough or you can use a piece of sandpaper if you don't happen to have a router or a router table. And again here on this one, um, this is my fence picket here, six foot cedar fence picket. I've laid out all the marks on there for what all the pieces will be. I've also marked them. Uh, it's a good idea to do that if you haven't done a lot of these so you know which piece goes where. Uh, this here of course is the back. This one is the front and I have the hole laid out. This is the roof and I'll be cutting the 10 degree bevels on there. There again you don't have to do that. Just something I like to add, make it a little nicer. These are the two sides. And as you can see, I've got the angles laid out on them. Uh, there again, if uh, you're a little more advanced, you can uh, just make one bevel cut and reverse the two pieces, and you don't have to make two bevels. But uh, this, for simplicity here, and to show you how this is done, I've laid it out this way. Also, notice I also have the lines in there to allow for the saw curve which is an eighth inch, happens to be an eighth inch of my miter saw. It also will be if you're using a hand saw. Uh, jigsaw will be less. A circular saw, it depends on uh, if you have a thin curved blade or a full curved blade. If you have a thin curved blade, this eighth inch allowance will be a little bit wide and you can either measure or you can just make another cut. But I'll uh, get these cut and we'll get to do some assembling. Okay, I've got all my pieces cut here and everything's kind of lined up and stacked up. Uh, after the cut, if you get like the little, what I call them whiskers here, little splinters on the edge because it is rough sawn cedar, uh, you can take a file. This is called a foreign hand file. It's uh, a rasp on a half round surface and then a, a coarse file on the other part of the half round surface. The back side is flat. You got the coarse file here and then the rasp on this end. These are not very expensive, they're under 10 bucks. You can get them uh, a lot of the box stores, even at Harbor Freight. Uh, they're made for wood, don't be trying to file steel with these, they won't last. Just take it and give it a little bit of a rub here and take the little splinters off. Makes for a better looking uh, project. You do the same thing on the edges and corners. It can also be used to, uh, this here is my roof piece and I did run it on the router table to round these edges off. You can also uh, do the rounding with one of these files by just uh, running it along the edge here like so. And it will give you the same type of effect if you don't have a router. And it makes it look a little bit nicer. It also keeps it from splintering. Okay next, uh, for the first step here you need to find your front. So, and I have the hole laid out here, be an inch and a half hole, and if you're using the Predator Guard, that'll match up, and it will need to be fastened flush with the top and flush with each side like so. And then we're going to be drilling a one and a half inch hole through here. There's a couple different ways to do this. 
Uh, this is called a spade bit or a paddle bit, which you can use in a, just a regular hand drill like this, cordless drill or a corded drill. But as you're drilling through, make sure you have a backboard behind it. And as this point comes through the other, just comes through the other side, stop. Turn it the material over, set this back into that hole, and then finish drilling your hole. This will keep you from having a bunch of blowout on the back side. Um, I'm going to be using what they call a Forster bit. Looks like so. These are also available from a lot of the big box stores, woodworking suppliers, uh, etc. And I'm going to be actually putting it in my drill press because I have a whole bunch of these to make. But uh, I'll show you how that works here in just a minute. I'll get my uh, Predator Guard attached to my backboard and we'll go over the drill press and make a hole. Okay, I have my uh, inch and a half Forster bit chucked up in the drill press here. Um, I have a backer board behind it for when the bit goes through. I have the uh, Predator Guard nailed on to the uh, front panel. There's my hole laid out. I'll get this positioned so that the point of the Forster bit lines up on my mark. And as you drill with one of these, back out occasionally and let the chips clear. There we have it. Nice clean inch and a half hole, both sides. Uh, there again, as I mentioned before, if you're using a spade bit, you can you can also use a forcer bit in a hand drill. You don't have to put it in the drill press, but I have a lot of these to do. Uh, if you're using the spade bit, as you get to where the point just comes through, once again reverse it, drill through from the other side. Do the same thing even if you're using a forcer bit. It'll make a cleaner hole and uh, always have a backboard behind it. Okay, we'll get repositioned, we'll get back over to the uh, table, and we'll put this thing together. Okay, we got all our parts lined up. So the first thing we want to do is, as we did on the uh, Robin and Swallow House, there are the chips here, we want to put our backboard on first. Uh, you'll notice on this one here I've got a little bit more pronounced angle you don't have to do that. You can just use the uh, angles that come with what they call the dog ear on the fence picket. Um, I added these just to uh, make a little bit of a change. Now I should also mention while I have this here, drill a quarter inch hole in the center of each of these houses. That will uh, give you something to hang it. Okay, we want to take our sides and get those mounted first. Once again, I use glue. You do not have to. Just makes for a little bit better joint, makes for a better seal. You'll want the, if you cut the bevel, you want the bevel up towards the dog ear and get this flush to the bottom. There again, you can use your other side for a prop to hold it up while you assemble. I'm doing this kind of backwards so I can get it on camera, and it's a little awkward. Just want to get everything lined up. If you get any glue squeeze out, just give it a little rub and flatten it out or wipe it off with a damp paper towel. The same thing for the other side.
Make sure you get all your edges aligned. Okay, the next part we want to put on is the front. And you'll notice as you set it on there, it is a little bit shorter than where the bevels are. We'll set this flat here. So when the roof is on, it overlaps all of this. This little uh, quarter inch slot up here allows for a vent so it doesn't get too hot inside. Obviously make sure you put the hole up. The advantage of cutting this little bevel up here on the Predator Guard is it gives you a place to be able to put your brad in. Just like that, and our next part will be the roof. Get the right edge around here. It'll set just like so. Here again, if you're not uh, real familiar with doing this type of work, measure and draw yourself a pencil line there so that your nails will line up with uh, the roof. Okay, and the last part, of course, is the floor. This will fit in here like so. And it's a little bit of a close fit. I have four, the four corners are 45 out, and there's a little bit of a gap here that gives it some ventilation. Also, when uh, we get the screws put in here for the tilt, it'll allow a little bit of space for that to actually be able to move. Okay, what we want to do next is measure in about an inch and three quarters. And then up about three eighths. Now that's where you want to put a screw in. To do that, you'll need to uh, use a drill bit with a countersink. This is a. Uh, I'll take this out and show you. This is uh, comes as a kit. Montana. I'm not sponsored by them. I just use their products. They're available at the big box stores. I believe this one came from Menards. Uh, on one end of this is the drill bit and countersink. On the other end is a driver bit. It's got a quick change chuck here. You can use it in an impact driver or a quarter drill. This just drops in like this to uh, the little brass collar flips down so you can drill your hole.
Then by flipping the brass collar you can flip this around. Then you'll have your drill bit. I'm using uh, inch and five eighths deck screws. Or they're made for outdoors. Just drive it down until it's flush, like so. We need to do the same thing on the other side. Measure up your uh, distance there. And up for three eighths. Flip your bit back. Flip it again. Just like that. And then on the front, I want to measure over to center, which is be two and three quarters. It's a five and a half inch board. Come up your about three-eighths of an inch. You can also do this with a uh, drill in one. If you happen to have a drill and a driver or two drills, you can have one bit in each one so you don't have to flip swap. But just for demonstration purposes. And there we have it. One bluebird house. Take this screw out in the fall and this bottom will flip down. So we'll get set up and last but not least will be the wren house. Okay and last but not least will be the wren house here. Uh, assembly on this is identical to what we just did with the bluebird house. The exceptions are this one does not require predator guard and the hole here is a one and one eighth inch instead of an inch and a half. Drilling it is going to be the same principle. Um, I have all my pieces laid out again on the fence picket allowing for saw curves. Um, I've elected to build this with a five degree roof angle instead of a ten degree. Uh, there again you don't have to do that. It could just be a flat roof. Um, I, this one here I don't have any rounded edges on but I did add a little bit to the back here with a rounded surface and to lay this out I marked the center of the board which was two and three quarters I took a sandpaper disc I can hold this up to and to get the radius you could also use a roll of tape or a roll of paper towels or anything that's round you can draw around and I laid that radius out from the center and just drew around it to where it hit the edge of the board this could either be cut out on a jigsaw you could use a coping saw um, I did it on my bandsaw, but just wanted to make this uh, just a little different. I won't be doing this with this one, I'll just be using the dog ear top. But I'll get these parts cut and get this put together and then we'll go from there. Okay, hey, um, I wasn't going to show the assembly of, of this one here because it is identical to what we just did with the Bluebird house. All the same steps, you start with the back, do the two sides, the front, the roof, and then the floor. Um, I didn't put the front screw in this yet so I could show how this works. Uh, at the end of the season you would take this screw out, reach up and just tilt this down. You can clean everything out. Roll this back up. Put your screw back in and you're ready for the next season. Now something I ran into when I was putting this one together was the uh, backboard here had a cup to it. Which means it was like this. So when I put the roof up I guess that I had a gap right here. What I did was I laid out and marked on the back, hopefully this will show, right there in the center, I screwed a hole, or I drilled a hole in and then uh, put a screw in, that took the cup out and pulled this up tight. And here again, you'll have that little vent slot at the top, it's about a quarter of an inch. So that's all there is to build a wren house, or a bluebird house, or a robin house. So let me get cleaned up here in a little bit. Now i got a few final comments. Okay, so just like that we've got some birdhouses. Uh, my whole point in making this video is to uh, show something for the beginning woodworker or a project for someone, maybe a grandpa like me. In fact, I'm a great-grandfather. 
uh, something to show your kids how to make, maybe get them introduced into it, uh, a little bit of woodworking. It's a good project for Cub Scouts or uh, some other type of organization like that. It's inexpensive, does not require a lot of tools. Obviously you need a drill, that's the only power tool you need unless you want to go to the old uh, brace and bit. Uh, you don't have to have a power saw, you don't have to have pneumatic nailers. Uh, I've done a few things on a couple of these that just to fancy them up a little bit, you don't have to have this rounded edge, you don't have to have uh, the fancy angles here, you don't have to have these bevels at all, it just adds a little bit uh, to the appearance of it. Uh, finish wise, uh, I suggest you not paint these. Uh, if you do use a uh, outdoor finish, it should be a water-based finish, not an oil base, and you definitely don't want to put anything on the inside. If you should use a uh, oil-based stain or an oil-based preservative like uh, Thompson's Water Seal, uh, do it well ahead of time or before you're going to put these out to let uh, what I call off-gas, let all the vapors go away. That way it won't be bothering the birds when they do come to visit. Uh, if you leave these as they are, they are uh, cedar. They'll weather to a natural silver gray color. It uh, all depends on what you like. Uh, there again, there are no perches on these. Uh, the birds have a knack of being able to grab onto the wood with their claws and hang on. Uh, all the perches is an invitation for uh, predators and unwanted birds. Uh, and the bluebird houses here, if you should get some sparrows in, you can always shoo them out and drop the, bo the bottom and uh, clean the old nest out. The wren house, you don't need to worry about. A sparrow can't fit in the hole. Uh, sparrows rarely nest in a platform box. Uh, you'll, you should only get robins and uh, barn swallows in these. So I uh, hope you got something out of this and uh, there again this is not for the advanced woodworker this is for the beginner or someone wanting to show children how to build something out of wood that's easy and inexpensive and fairly safe to build. Uh, if you saw anything in here that makes you uncomfortable for example of me uh, using the router table without guards on it, uh, don't do that. Use the guards like they're supposed to be. I'm uh, experienced. I've been doing this for years. I know where and where not to put my hands. And yes, I have all my fingers. So, that being said, uh, if you like this, please give it a thumbs up. Of course, we're always looking for subscribers. Uh, please subscribe. Hit that bell at the end and you'll be notified when we post a new video. Uh, dimensions for these will be at, at the end of the video. I'll run a sort of a long slide. You can either do a screenshot. Uh, and print it out or you can uh, pause the video and uh, copy them down. Nothing really complicated here so I decided not to try to make uh, SketchUps or anything else of this or AutoCAD. In fact I can't even use SketchUp really. I do can use AutoCAD but uh, you have a problem with most people do not have AutoCAD on their computers to be able to read it. So see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.